This episode was inspired by Jonathan Wilson's book, Behind the Curtain, Travels in Eastern Europe. In their heyday, Yugoslavia were a formidable football inside. They reached the World Cup semi-finals on two occasions and made two European Championship finals. As a World Cup team, their record speaks for itself, only missing out on the knockout stages twice. They have made four Olympic finals, finally claiming gold in Rome in 1960. The 1987 World Youth winners were coming to the fore with four of that squad making the World Cup squad in 1990. Robert Prozineski of that youth squad was named best young player at Italia 90. With all that talent, the likes of Zvonomir Boban couldn't make the team, and despite being in the 22, Davos Uka couldn't earn any minutes at the tournament. Yugoslavia barreled through qualification for Euro 92, but by the time qualification was sealed, however, the Yugoslav Republic was falling to pieces. Croatia, Slovenia and Macedonia had all declared independence, and Bosnia-Herzegovina were independent by the time the tournament swung around. The Bosnian War soon after independence began on April 6, 1992. Ethnic cleansing and genocide took place in Bosnia with over 100,000 people killed. The war raged on until 1995. Eventually, Serbia, Montenegro and Kosovo all claimed their independence. All three nations are now recognised by football's governing bodies. On the pitch, Yugoslavia were banned from Euro 92. This allowed Denmark to swoop in and win the tournament. Yugoslavia returned to tournament football at the turn of the century, making the knockout stages of the 1998 World Cup and Euro 2000 where they were beaten by the Netherlands in both tournaments. In Yugoslavia's absence, successes such as Croatia have enjoyed highs with two podium finishes in the World Cup, third in 1998 and second in 2018. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if Yugoslavia didn't collapse. Top scorer in qualification, Darko Panchev with 10 alongside Dragan Stojkovic, Robert Prozineski, Zvonimir Boban, Robert Zhani and Davos Suka were to be feared in Sweden. Their first opponents were Graham Taylor's England in Malmö. Prozineski and Panchev got the goals in a 2-0 victory. Yugoslavia held their own against Sweden and France to progress to the semi-finals. A solitary Prozineski goal sealed a berth in the final against Germany. Stefan Effenberg netted the winner in Gothenburg. Yugoslavia had lost their third European Championship final. As the 20th century became the 21st, however, a glut of Croatians came through the national setup. Alan Boksic, Slaven Bilic, Dejan Stankovic, and the Kovac brothers all became national regulars into the new millennium, the former of which was in imperious form. Alan Boksic scored four as Yugoslavia toppled the 1994 World Cup group featuring Nigeria, Argentina, and Bulgaria. They were to be humbled by eventual finalists Italy in the last 16. Euro 96 in England marked the birth onto the European stage of Hamburg winner Hasan Salihamidzic. He linked up well with Prozineski, Boksic and Suka to embarrass England on opening night at Wembley. Yugoslavia would lose to the Netherlands but after achieving second place, reached a second successive European final. Again it was Germany, and again it was a loss, and again it was by the solitary goal. Davos Suka put Yugoslavia ahead inside five minutes but a double from Andreas Moller clinched the Euros for Germany. Revenge was sweet in the following World Cup. Davos Suka rifled in two goals and a 2-0 win over the Germans. Yugoslavia topped the group. Mexico, Romania and France were all vanquished in a route to yet another final for the Yugoslav side. Even with Ronaldo misfiring, a Bebeto winner claimed a second successive World Cup for the Brazilians. After beating Spain, France and Portugal, only Italy stood in their way of a first title since the Olympic crown in 1960. A fifth Euros final ended the way the others didn't. Goals from Dejan Stankovic and Niko Kovac, two relatively new members of the squad, secured Yugoslavia's first European Championships in 2000. The old enemy would slay Yugoslavia in Japan and South Korea in 2002, however, taken apart by Germany in the semi-finals. Lean years followed, exiting at the groups of Euro 2004 and the last 16 of the subsequent World Cup to eventual winners Italy. By the time of the European Championships in 2008, the likes of Nemanja Vidic, Edin Dzeko, Avicja Olic, Luka Modric, Miralam Pjanic and Branislav Ivanovic were regular members of the squad. 22-year-old Luka Modric sold show as Yugoslavia marched through the opposition to reach the final in Vienna. Yugoslavia beat Germany not only in the groups but in the semi-final, however a record 6th European Championship final came a little too soon for the young Yugoslav team. The tiki-taka style of Spain was too much, beating them 3-0 thanks to a David Villa hat-trick. A second golden generation would earn the tag of nearly men in the intervening years. In the next four tournaments, the Dutch and the Germans eliminated Yugoslavia from the quarter-finals between 2010 and 2016. But the World Cup in Russia left the likes of Luka Modric, Edin Dzeko, Nemanja Matic, Mario Mandzukic, Alexander Kolarov and Ivan Perisic in one of their last chances to win an international tournament. Antti Rebic, Matteo Kovacic and Jan Oblak were entering the peak of their powers. 
After humiliating Argentina in the groups, Yugoslavia did their level best to make things hard for themselves in the knockout stages. Denmark, Russia and England were all beaten after extra time. They were fed France at the Luzniki in their second ever World Cup final. Luka Modric and Antoine Griezmann traded penalties in Moscow before a second half surge courtesy of Rebic and Dzeko inflicted a 3-1 defeat on France. The French were made to wait for their first World Cup as Yugoslavia had ascended to the top of the world stage. Yugoslavia winners In the crunch's breakup was the absence of a European Championships win in 2000 and obviously a World Cup triumph in 2018. Italy losers. Even with what was already a cruel loss in the final of Euro 2000 in real life against France, they still couldn't topple Yugoslavia in this make-believe world. Is this the alternative football universe you expected from this scenario? Please feel free to suggest videos down in the comments section and I will sooner or later get round to making a video about it. I would be very grateful if you could drop a like and a comment on this video and subscribe, as it really helps the channel grow, so I can continue to deliver 7 days a week content. I'm also on Twitter at whatif underscore YouTube.